Today, we're taking a detour to the U.S. Virgin Islands and exploring St. Thomas, an island rich in both history and adventure. St. Thomas is one of the top cruise destinations, but we are not cruisers. So instead, we have a full five days here to take in all of the sites and visit the top attractions. That way, if you are in St. Thomas for just a port visit or an extended period of time, you can make the most out of your trip. A few things we do every time we travel is find a good coffee shop, the best spot for views, and find the downtown area. And St. Thomas has a lot of spots for great views. Getting around, you have to drive up and down the mountains on the left side of the road, but we'll talk more about that later. So we're gonna grab some breakfast and then head downtown to the capital to walk around. And our first stop is Barefoot Buddha. The Barefoot Buddha is a super cute cafe that is right next to the cruise port and it had great vibes inside. It also looked like it'd make a really good workplace. Here I got the breakfast burrito with house-made veggies, black beans, chili, eggs, cheese, spinach, chipotle aioli, and cilantro. Sometimes breakfast burritos are too dry. This is not dry. I got the Barefoot Bagel Sandwich, which was turkey breast, fried egg, bacon, cream cheese, and chipotle aioli on an everything bagel. Charlotte Amelie is the capital city and the largest city in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Founded in the 1600s, there are still buildings standing today with that classic Danish architecture like Blackbeard's Castle and Fort Christian, which is the oldest building in the Virgin Islands. Right now we're at the 99 steps just behind me. They're actually supposed to be like 103, so we're gonna walk up and see just how many there are. Three, four. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna count every step? And as we walk up these stairs and Sarah counts along the way, I don't actually know why they're called 99 steps because there's 103 of them, right? So if you know why it's called 99 steps, leave a comment down below. What I do know is they're also called step streets and they were built by the Danes as a means to get around some of these hills in St. Thomas. The 99 steps are something to add to your list, but not something overly important to see. The view from the top is nice if you walk over to Blackbeard's castle, but with the castle closed, the steps serve more as a good photo spot and maybe some exercise. We made our way to the tallest viewpoint in St. Thomas. We are at Mountaintop and there are a couple ways to get up here. You can drive like we did, or you can take a cable car. Cable car tickets, I think for like 25 bucks round trip. We already spent $900 on a rental car, so we just drove our happy butts up here. Also, this place is supposed to have really good banana daiquiris, so we're gonna grab a couple of those and then enjoy the view. World famous. World famous. That sign says over 7 million daiquiris sold. And I saw another video and that sign was still there, so it's probably way more than that now. Okay, it's windy up here. So we got our daiquiris, check out this view. Probably can't see that, hold on. From mountaintop, you can almost see all of the Virgin Islands. And right over there is Megan's Bay, where we'll be heading tomorrow. for you all on St. Thomas is to compare the beaches because we know there are a ton of really incredible ones like the one that you can see behind me. This is our first beach of the trip and it is very beautiful obviously. The beach itself is pretty thin but there's not a lot of people here and I'm wondering if that's because there is a charge to get in. I think we paid seven dollars to get in and park um, but I think that seven dollars is well worth it. Sand is great, water is beautiful, it's really windy so it's really wavy but this is a good one to start off with for sure.
Tony's on shoe duty. The next morning, it was time to check out the most popular beach on the island. Welcome to Megan's Bay. This place is probably the highest rank attraction in St. Thomas and I think we're in the top 10 of beaches in the Caribbean. It is super crowded when you first get onto the beach. If you walk a little bit further down to one end, it clears up a bit. There's $5 for each of us as adults to get in here and a $2 car fee. I might get hate for this, but I think it might be overhyped. I think we went to a much more beautiful beach yesterday that was cheaper and less crowded. I think go here because it's a well-known attraction, but this might not be at the top of my St. Thomas list. I will say though, the bushwhackers here are delicious. Oh yeah. Hairstyle don'ts 101. I've been trying to lock up my hair. It's been a little over a month now and it felt pretty solid, but just got taken out by a wave and it absolutely destroyed everything. Look at this. Our next two beaches, Sapphire Beach and Secret Harbor are on resorts, but there is very easy access for the public. is Sapphire Beach, which we are at right now. Perks of Sapphire Beach is it's free, which is really great. The parking was super easy. There's tons of parking. The beach is pretty small, so it feels crowded. I don't know if there's a lot of people here. It's just all in one spot, so it does feel really crowded, but it's beautiful. I think it's prettier than Megan's Bay. The water is bluer, the water is calmer. I think it's a better view, but there are a lot of people here. Secret Harbor is a lot like Sapphire Beach in that it's a small beach. The thing about this beach is there's not a lot of parking. There's like three designated public beach parking spots and they fill up really quick. What I do like about this beach though is that it is really calm. Like you can look out there, there's no waves. If you want to snorkel, this is a great place to snorkel. Your feet look like when we cook, when we bread chicken before we cook it. You dip it in the flour and the panko. <laughs> panko crusted feet. Who gon' watch the sunrise with me? Who gon' catch the next wave? Who gon' come and unwind with me? Ain't no better day Cause it's the last day on the world I feel like it's the last With two days down and three beaches checked off of our list, it was time for us to explore Cokie Beach. We made it to Cookie Point Beach. We're gonna dive this morning. I'm super excited. I don't know if you can see the amount of people behind me, but this is another one of those small beaches that gets really crowded, but the water looks great. So I'm excited to get in. So about that dive I was all excited about? Well, as we all know, things don't always go to plan when traveling. This was one of those times. So we were supposed to go diving with Cokie Beach Dive Center. Our dive master, Brittany, was super nice. She told us that because of the swells that happened the last couple of days, the visibility is like 15%. She even gave us a mask and snorkel to go check it out, and the visibility really wasn't that great. Right here on the shore, you can see lots of fish, but once you get out to the dive flags, it was like no viz whatsoever. So she offered to let us cancel the dive, which we did, and we're still gonna snorkel a little bit here at Cokie Beach, but then we're gonna go to another beach. I really do wish the visibility was a lot better at Cokie Beach. Just from where we snorkeled, you can tell how clear the water can get here.
What are your thoughts on Cokie Beach? It's nice. The waves are a little rough today. Visibility is not great. I do enjoy the selection of like food vendors, smoothies, mm. bars, all of that. That's really accessible. Not my favorite beach we've been to, but it's definitely not at the bottom of the list. One beach that is at the top of our list is Linquist Beach, which was the first beach that we showed you in this video. Let's get some rum. Okay. Rum. Rum. We got ourselves a couple more bushwhackers and then a couple more after that because, well, as Sarah says, she's the best. So one thing we haven't really talked about is how to get around this island. There's taxis and buses. I don't know how much they cost, but I do know the buses get packed. So if you are the type of person that doesn't like to sit really close to other people, there are other ways to get around. One of those ways and the way I most recommend is renting a car. Super last minute, we rented through a company called Dexter's Car Rental. And I should probably wait until we return the car to say this, but I'm gonna say this is the best car rental on the island. Should probably also mention a few things. Since it was last minute and we wanted a Jeep, we paid $900 for six days. A bit pricey, but worth it. You're gonna want a car with all wheel drive. It's nearly impossible to drive up these mountain roads without it, and it's challenging enough driving on the left side of the road if you're not used to it. Today is our last day in St. Thomas, so we hung out at Secret Harbor until our flight. We made our way back to Secret Harbor, and I gotta say it's much nicer today than it was a few days ago. The sky is out, the water is super clear. Like I said the other day, the best thing about this beach is that it's free. It's just a really nice beach. Bushwhacker. It is the signature cocktail on the island. It's like a chocolatey pina colada. Generally, I think the gist of it is like a liqueur, so like a Kahlua or an Irish cream of some sort. Amaretto I've seen a lot, and then lots of coconut and lots of cacao. This one, you can definitely taste whatever Irish cream is in it. And this has been our drink of choice while on St. Thomas. This one might be the strongest one we've had yet. I feel like this whole week, everyone has been in such a good mood. Like people visiting, people who are like working, the locals, just like everyone here has been so happy and it just feels like people are either so thankful to be here or so thankful to just be in a place like this. Sometimes you travel to places and people are just grumpy and rude and this is not one of those places. We are hours, literally hours away from leaving the island and we come back from Secret Harbor and we got into a fender bender. Not our far, our car was parked, someone else was trying to park and it hit the back of our bumper, but we have this rental car and now we have to return it with an accident report. Meanwhile, Sarah is cleaning out all the sand that we left in the car. So it's a $250 fee for sand, we got most of it out. The only issue is really that bumper, so we'll see what happens. We ended up returning the car at the airport and they were completely understanding about it, so no issue yet. The US Virgin Islands are beautiful. If you wanna see more of them, watch our next few videos, which we discover local food on the island and take a ferry over to St. John for the day. Hello, ladies, how you doing? Bushwhacker.